Hello, church family. This is Pastor Russ, and I want to welcome you back to Unshakable, thriving no matter what hits you. And today is session six. Are you learning from those who came before you? And we have a rock star uh, to my right. <laughs> Pastor Matt is with us today. What's up, everybody? Pastor Matt, so glad that you could be Sorry. here. Great to be uh, back. Man, you always bring a lot to the table when we do these, and I'm really glad that you're here today. My pleasure. Uh, and, and you know, when I say welcome church family, now that when, when we say church family, this is bigger than Burlington now. Yeah, Trenton too. We've got Trenton too, so life groups are happening in Trenton, happening in, in Burlington, at the campus and people's homes, and so. It's awesome. We're just really glad that you've jumped into this and are part of this Unshakable series, because I'll tell you, we're living in some crazy times, bro. And uh, a lot of things are coming at uh, the church, the, the, the people of God, in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And, and we've got to remain unshakable. Um, and so each of these sessions are speaking to us in a really powerful way. And I, I really believe that today will, will be no less. So get your books open. Uh, we're going to start there on page 52. Uh, but but let, let, let me give you just a little bit of a backdrop here, okay? So King Nebuchadnezzar, we've been talking about him for the past several weeks. He's dead. Dead. He ha- <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> um, he'd reigned for 45 years. Yep. Long reign. Now his grandson takes over, and he's a piece of work. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a handful. He's sure. a handful. So he's a party animal, and uh, Pastor Matt's going to take you to the text in just a minute. Now, he's taken over from his grandfather, sensing weakness, the two greatest enemies of Babylon are about to come against them, mm. the, the Medes and the Persians. Now, they're coming to overtake, overtake this great walled city of Babylon, and uh, these two armies are camped outside the city, yep. and they're ready to attack. Uh, so what does this young kid do? He throws a party. <laughs> <laughs> he throws a party. He throws a party. And, and, he, and he doesn't just throw a party. He's like, hey, I got an idea. Now, remember... Remember that, that, that Babylon had overthrown Jerusalem, right. taken the, the holy vessels out of the temple. Mm-hmm. And he says, I got an idea. Let's go get the goblets and uh, let's drink wine out of those. Yeah. So he's, uh, he's not only a party animal, he's profaning the name of God and all of the, the temple uh, artifacts, I guess. Yep. And uh, so he's, he's certainly did not learn from his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar. No, and it would have been really valuable for him to do that. Very valuable. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to jump into that in a moment, talking about how to learn from those who, who came uh, before us. But uh, I'm going to pitch this to Pastor Matt, so let's go. Uh, he's going to begin to read the text at the top of page 52. Let's do this together. Awesome. So this is uh, Daniel chapter 5, and uh, reading from verse 1. King Belshazzar gave a great banquet for a thousand of his nobles, and drank wine with them. While Belshazzar was drinking his wine, he gave orders to bring in the gold and silver goblets that Nebuchadnezzar, uh, it says his father there, but we know that his, his grandfather, had taken from the temple in Jerusalem so that the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines uh, might drink from them. So they brought in the gold goblets that had been taken from the temple of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. As they drank the wine, they praised the gods of gold and silver, mm. of bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Well, so, so they're drinking from the holy yeah. goblets, and they're... Of the one true God. Of the one true God. Yeah. And they're praising the gods of gold and silver. Right, that Nebuchadnezzar had already renounced these gods. That's right. He had Good renounced point. the gods and turned to Yahweh and said, um, Yahweh, the God of the Israelites, is the one true God. I will serve him only. I mean, he repented, truly. That's right, because Nebuchadnezzar, you know, had his crazy times in, in, in his early days. But he really came to That's right. believe in the one true God. That's correct. And so you're right, Pastor Matt, I forgot. He had renounced these gods. That's correct. And so the grandson is not learning from his grandfather. Nope. Okay, so th- this is really cool what you see happens next, so go yeah. ahead. Yeah, super weird thing happens here. Suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall. Near the lampstand in the royal palace, the king watched the hand as it wrote. His face turned pale, and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking. I mean, that's a pretty interesting way to talk about uh, the fright that came over this man. Well, I've been scared too. Yeah. (laughs) So there's just a hand that shows up 
Yeah, some supernatural occurrence happens where this, the hands of a human hand uh, write with its finger onto the wall. So yeah. without any writing utensil, uh, it basically just drives its finger into the wall and wipes it. So what, whatever apparition they saw, uh, it was sent by God. Sent by God, yeah. And it was to reveal this truth about uh, the state of Belshazzar, his empire, and uh, not learning from the past. That's right. You know, you know it's, it's, it's cool. I don't think people realize that some of our cliches that we use today came from the Bible. Like yeah. uh, the handwriting on the wall. Yep came from here. <laughs> That's this story, right? The writing on the wall is right there. This is the story it came from. So they don't, they, 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 they can't interpret it. So, so what, what, what yeah. happens next? Uh, we'll just continue on. Daniel is actually summoned because they know that Daniel is a man of God. He's a man of much wisdom. Um, he's also a noble in the king's court, but notice he wasn't at this party. He wasn't partaking in, in what these, uh, these people, these Babylonian people were doing. The debauchery, he had wanted nothing to do good with point, it. Good point, good so, point. Because he'd been promoted by Nebuchadnezzar, that's correct. the grandfather, yep. but he wasn't at the party. No. He oh, that's like, a good point, bro. <laughs> uh, his, again, his habits that he developed as a young man of refraining and abstinence from you know, drinking and uh, you know, revelry and, and partying and all yeah. that stuff, yeah. that wasn't in his character. So he wasn't going to be caught dead at this party. Uh, but nevertheless, he was summoned by the king. So he did his job and he came. Interesting. If we want to remain unshakable, yeah. we can't play the same games that ungodly people play. That's for sure. I mean, the old saying goes, uh, guilty by association is very true. Very and true. And a lot of times you can get yourself caught up in some really bad situations just by being present when someone is doing something wrong. Go ahead. Take us. Yep. So uh, Daniel is summoned and uh, Daniel 5 verses 25 uh, this is the message that was written. It says, Meeny, meeny, tekel, and parson. Now, what in the world does that mean? Uh, people have tried to translate that. Now, it, this was something that they had trouble translating as Babylonian people um, because it was written in like a heavenly language. Hmm. But Daniel, who had the mind of the Lord, who had the mind of Yahweh, could interpret it for them. So basically, uh, it comes out to uh, being this. Uh, your days are numbered. Uh, you've been weighed in the balance, and uh, your kingdom will be divided. Now, this was a prophetic, a disastrous prophecy for oh, yeah. the Babylonian Empire and for Belshazzar. Yeah, Daniel was telling him, from God, your time is up. Yeah, this was a death knell for King Belshazzar. Yeah, you're losing your... This was not good news. No. <laughs> so, he says, so basically, mene means number, right? So Yeah, your days are numbered. Y your days are numbered. Um, your kingdom's going to be divided, and your time's up. Yeah, you're done. Wow. <laughs> pulling, the, pulling the carpet out from underneath you, this is, uh, this is the end. Okay, so you, you know what? When, when they, it's interesting. When they, when they didn't know what was next, they knew who to call. They yeah. called Daniel. When, yep. when, when, and interesting that when people are in trouble who don't have faith in God, let, let's let our testimony shine so bright that they know who to call. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, take us, uh, because this, this is strange what happens next. Yeah, even more building on just Daniel's reputation right here, Daniel chapter 5, again, just going right down the line, uh, verses 29 through 31, it says, Then Belshazzar ordered that Daniel be dressed in purple. Now, uh, Belshazzar had just been given a death knell, but he realizes that Daniel is right. He speaks the word of God. Uh, so he dresses him in purple and makes him wear a gold chain. Um, so he, Daniel's got some bling on. Uh, he made Daniel the third <laughs> highest ruler in the kingdom. Uh, but that night, King Belshazzar of Babylon was killed, and Darius the Mede took over his kingdom. He was 62 years old. So literally just like that, the prophecy came, the word of the Lord came, wow. and Belshazzar uh, was done. He was no more. You know, I, I just had a thought. Uh, what Belshazzar should have done was to repent. Yeah. Instead, he gives Daniel gifts. Yeah. But he should have repented right then and, and called on the name of the Lord. For sure. It could, have been, it could have been, too, that that would have been a saving grace for him. But it uh, just shows you that your, your highest point in life, which was right there, literally celebrating over the fact that they had ransacked Jerusalem and made a mockery out of them, uh, and his lowest point where he's literally mm. dying right, and losing his kingdom, are so connected. Wow. There's literally probably only hours Yes. Between the prophecy yes. being given 
This was at dinner, right? And uh, later on that evening, he's killed. Wow. So your highest points and your lowest points in life can be very closely connected, but it's really what you do in between those things, remembering the past, that's going to dictate what happens in the future. See, when Daniel confronted Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar repented. Right. Yeah. But, like, but, but, but <laughs> I mean, he was grieved deeply. Yes, yes. Yeah. But Belshazzar didn't learn from those who had gone before him. That's correct. And so he doesn't repent. He just gives Daniel gifts, thinking he can buy God's favor. And you can't do that. So uh, it, let, let's keep going. Yep. Um, so this comes right down to our kind of key verse for this whole lesson. Uh, it's taken out of Proverbs. It says, always remember what you've learned. Your education is your life. Guard it well. Now, this is not just talking about your academics. This is talking about your street smarts, but it's also talking about your spiritual know-how. Amen to that. Like, you can't, you can't just trust your degrees. You can't just trust your back, you know, bachelor's degree, your associate's degree, whatever certificates you have, your, you know, your master's degree. None of that really matters as much as your spiritual education. Like you, and even coming to church is not going to get you there. That's right. Like, That's right. We can't educate you as pastors as much as you need to be educated spiritually. You've got you to gotta find the way to do that by reading your word and by taking some of the pointers from this lesson. Self-feed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we just can't depend on the preacher to feed me um, on Sunday. So how do I become wise like Daniel? Or how do we learn from those who have gone before us? Um, Great thoughts, man. I, I love this. So let's go to the top of page 53. And these are a few points that we want to, uh, to, to take you through. Number one, write this in. Make a commitment to never stop learning. Yeah. Here's what the scriptures are. Commit yourself to instruction. Listen carefully to words of knowledge. So make a commitment to never stop learning. And here's where I think Belshazzar missed it. He got elevated to the throne and he thought, now he thinks I'm all that in a bag of chips. Mm -hmm. So he, he got elevated to this position and, and didn't think he had to keep learning. And, and, and that's dangerous because yeah. uh, we, uh, in, in, in one of our lessons, we talked about that success will test you yeah. even more than suffering. Yeah. Test you. Yeah, when you think you've achieved it, you're in danger. Yeah, and I think Belshazzar thought, I've reached the pinnacle, yeah. I know it all, and, uh, and really he didn't. He should have learned from his grandfather. So make a commitment to never stop learning. I love this verse in Ecclesiastes, Pastor Matt. If an ax is dull and its edge is unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. Yep. Uh, we need to continue to sharpen our mind. I think the point is there, you never waste time sharpening your ax. Yep. No, it's true. And the cool thing about this scripture is it's not just talking about the skill in swinging the axe. It's the skill in sharpening the axe. Mm. Everybody wants to get out there and get the job done. I remember um, my uncle, he was uh, just a really, really professional tree you know, cutter. He used to climb poles for um, uh, New Jersey Transit. And uh, he had all his gear and he had all these awesome chainsaws. And as a kid, <laughs> Uh, I used to love like watching my uncle like cut down trees because it was just the coolest thing because he was so skilled. Yeah. Um, but I never understood it before he would get out there and cut trees early on in the morning. Um, he would spend countless, you know, like hours just sharpening his blades and mm. making sure the blade was tight mm. and um, each tooth on the chainsaw had to be sharpened. And it was a, yes. this little file that you had to send on a certain angle and it had to yeah. be lubed. I mean, yeah. everything down to a, a science but the thing was, like, if he didn't do that, didn't spend time sharpening that chainsaw in the morning, that tree was not falling by the afternoon. That's so important. We need to, uh, when, it, when we talk about never stop learning, we need to sharpen our edge, if you will, our spiritual edge, yeah. by continuing to learn. Just because you learn two or three Bible verses and can, can quote them by heart and have a few favorites, uh, we need to continue to learn. Yes, sir. Uh, a couple more scriptures, or one more. Do yourself a favor and learn all you can. Then remember what you learn, and you will prosper. If we're going to be wise, and if we're going to be unshakable, we need to make a commitment to never stop learning. Yeah. Amen, amen to that. Amen to that. Uh, number two, I'm going to pitch it to you, bro. Number two, learn the lessons of the prior generations. And the key verse is right out of Job. Uh, ask the former generations and find out what their fathers learned. For we were born only yesterday and know nothing. <laughs> so I guess it's just 
assume that you know nothing and try to learn everything that you can. Some people who have been there, done that. Yeah, it's so important. And um, for relationships that you need to become wise, because this is really what it's all about, is, is educating yourself, growing in wisdom, uh, some really uh, key people that you need in your life, uh, that all of us need, that we currently still need. So um, very simple is you need mentors. You need people who've done it right, yeah. right? Who've done it right in the past, who have the experience. And these could even be people who have passed on already. They could have written a book or maybe there's a, True. Uh, a, a, a video about their life or just someone who you know about like the experience that they have. Um, one of the reasons why we've all learned uh, just from the past is because these people have left uh, material behind yeah. that teaches us. So mentors, everybody's got to have them. Uh, models, these are people who are currently doing it right. <laughs> like True. the people that we, uh, we aspire to be like, the people who we can visibly see and interact with, um, the people who we want to be like, right? Everybody's got to have a role model. Um, three is partners. These are people who are doing it with you currently, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and these are people who are in the trenches with you. Uh, the illustration of people in a rowboat together, right? This is uh, you and that other partner who are rowing together, working together for uh, the kingdom of God. So you definitely have to have a partner. Yeah, don't try to do life alone. Yeah. So uh, congratulations to everybody who, who's in a group. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You guys are already partnering together. Yeah. So shout yeah. out to everybody who's listening to this exactly. right now. You guys are exactly. already <laughs> ahead of the game. Um, so make good use of this time. Don't just be in the seat. Uh, engage with hmm. your fellow partners. Yeah, um, And then last but not least, friends. These are people who stay when others leave. So uh, get yourself a good group of friends who's trustworthy, who's going to be there when times get tough. You know, I, I think what this is screaming out at me is we need more than book learning. Yeah. We need mentors and models and partners and friends. We can learn so much from people around us. Yep. Uh, not to hate on book learning. We need, you know, yeah, we need that. life experience. Yeah, but life experience can be so beneficial. That's right. Let's turn the page and uh, go to number three. And that is, write this in, if you will, maintain a humble attitude that honors God. Amen. Uh, a thought comes to my mind, nobody likes to know it all. <laughs> I heard somebody say all. one time, um, uh, those people who think they know it all are annoying to those of us who do. <laughs> um, so nobody's right. a know-it-all. I don't care where you've been, what you've done. Let's all remain uh, teachable, I think. Pastor Matt is the yeah. key there. And, and everybody that's watching, humility and teachability actually work together. That's right. They go hand in hand. You can't be teachable unless you're humble. And so uh, true. it's from the position of humility that you can be taught. Yes. So, you know, when you're learning, uh, start with that premise first. So true. I, I filled out so many reference forms for people who are aspiring to be pastors and ministers. Yeah. And always the question is there, are they teachable? Yeah. So let's remain humble, everybody. You don't know it all. I don't know it all. Pastor Matt doesn't know it all. Know it all. Let's remain humble. Uh, the scripture is reverence for the Lord is an education in itself. You must be humble before you can ever receive honor. Amen. Another scripture from James, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Yikes. <laughs> that's Number, a yikes moment. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yikes moment. Let's just remain humble and teachable always. Yeah. No, see, Belshazzar reached that high level, and sometimes when we reach high positions, we, th we, we think nobody can teach us. Yeah. Uh, I went to Assemblies of God uh, District Council one time. They brought in some big name speakers, but the, but the one who touched me the most was a guy who just started his church and had less than 100 people. And right. he spoke with such power and such anointing. I think point is, we can learn from anybody. That's correct. Not just those who are bigger and better than us. We, we can learn from those coming up as well. That's right. Go ahead, number four. Man, number four is like the simplest one out of all of them. It says, refuse to fill my mind with garbage, right? So this is, yeah. uh, this is the simplest thing for us. Um, in, in writing, it's the simplest, but it's the hardest in actually doing it. Uh, everybody's True. concerned about um, you know, pollution of the oceans and pollution uh, in the air, yeah. but nobody's concerned about pollution of the mind. Bam! Because we think we can handle it. Right? But we think we can. The thing is, like, garbage piles up. Maybe one, uh, you know, 
Uh, one movie that you're watching that doesn't glorify God is okay to you, um, you know, but a constant diet of, uh, mm. of secular music, of secular movies, of a secular environment, that's going to pile up. Right, because you can't bad fil- language, you can't filter that nudity, violence. Yeah, it's, yeah it, it, it's and, and then and yeah, and then we wonder when that comes out of us. Yeah, garbage or in. why it comes out. Garbage in, garbage out. Really simple. Number five. Number five. So put it into practice. Go ahead and write this in. Put into practice what I've already learned. Yeah. Go ahead and write that in. Put into practice what I've already learned. Let's keep writing. I haven't learned it until I do it. Hmm. That means we can have a lot of knowledge in our mind, but we haven't really learned it until we do it. I guess uh, we could say, I could go to a marriage seminar and learn how to have a great marriage, how to be a great husband. Right. Uh, and if it's, but, but if I don't put it into practice, I really haven't learned it until I do it. Yeah, same with your diet. You can read all about... Um, a healthy diet. <laughs> a healthy diet. Yeah, I'm reading a great diet book while I'm pounding down the sour cream and onion chips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can be a certified dietitian and still be obese. Bam. Yeah. So you, really, you haven't really learned it until yep. you, you do it. Uh, and the scripture is, you are his successor. This is what somebody told Belshazzar. You knew all this. Yeah. And, his, and, and Nebuchadnezzar worshipped God, praised God, looked to God, told others about God. And, and, and here, Daniel's telling him, you knew all this, yet you've not humbled yourself, for you have proudly defied the Lord of heaven. Mm. Belshazzar knew the right way, but he, upset, yeah. he didn't really learn it because he never practiced it. Right. Let's not just have a, a, a head full of knowledge about how to live a godly life we haven't really learned it till we do it truth. so wrap us up bro awesome man so if i don't humbly learn from the generations before me i will end up making the exact same mistakes hmm. and the last verse for the day is this some of these people have missed the most important thing in life they don't know god that's first timothy 6 21 okay we're going to pitch this back to you when you're in your life groups if I don't humbly learn from the generations that went before me, we can make the same mistakes. You're going to talk about that and all these other things that we've discussed here today. I'm sure that a lot of you have had some life experiences where you've learned from the past, maybe even where you've ignored some lessons from yeah. those who have gone before you. And uh, I'm, I'm sure there'll be some healthy discussion. Absolutely. Uh, so before we go, Pastor Matt, just close this out with a brief prayer, and then sure, we'll pitch it back to the life group leaders. All right, y'all pray alongside me. God, we thank you for this day, and I thank you for each group that's meeting right now. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just guide the rest of their conversation yes, as they Lord. grow in you. Lord, help us to learn uh, God through life experience, but also to apply it in our everyday lives. Yes, God. Um, educate us by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor, job, man. always a pleasure. Oh, man, good stuff. See you guys.